Assalamu alaikum students. This is your second lecture on water supply and sanitary engineering. In this lecture, you will study about the turbidity, one of the physical characteristics of water, and then about the chemical characteristics. Now starting with the turbidity. Turbidity is the presence of suspended matter in water. The suspended matter can be clay, silt, organic and inorganic matter. Now the problem caused by turbidity is that it creates a cloudy or muddy appearance in water and the filtration of more turbid water becomes more difficult and costly. The turbidity of water is expressed as parts per million or milligram per liter. In water, one part per million is equal to one milligram per liter. The standard unit of turbidity is 1 milligram of fuller's earth dissolved in 1 liter of distilled water. Or we can say 1 part of fuller's earth in million parts of water. Now what is the fuller's earth? Fuller's earth is the finely divided silica. Now the measurement of turbidity. How can be the turbidity measured? It can be measured either by turbidity rod or by turbidimeters. The three types of turbidimeters are Jackson turbidimeter, Bailey's turbidimeter and nephlometer. Now starting with the turbidity rod, it consists of aluminium rod 203 mm long, a platinum needle and a nickel ring. Here you can see the diagram of a turbidity rod. An aluminium rod about 203 mm long is graduated. The upper end of the rod is fixed with graduated tape and the lower end is fixed with a screw with a platinum needle and a nickel ring. In nickel ring a stick is inserted so as to keep the rod vertical. Now to find out the turbidity of the rod. The rod is gradually lowered in the water sample to be tested and the depth at which the platinum needle ceases to be seen is noted. The reading gives the turbidity in parts per million. This rod can be used anywhere in the field. Now coming on to the turbidimeters. First the principle on which the turbidimeters work. All the turbidimeters work on the same principle that is with increase in turbidity of water, the interference caused by the water sample to passage of light rays also increases. Or in other words, we can say the light rays pass easily through a less turbid water. Starting with the Jackson turbidimeter, it's also called Jackson candle turbidimeter. You can see the diagram of a Jackson candle turbidimeter. As shown in the figure, the apparatus consists of a metal stand on which a standard candle is fixed. On the metal stand, the graduated glass tube is fixed. This glass tube is placed in a metal cylindrical container. The glass tube and the candle are placed in such a manner that their center lines coincide. Now for measuring turbidity, what you have to do, the candle is lighted and some water is poured in the glass tube and the image of flame of the candle is observed from the top of the glass tube. The depth of water is increased by adding more water. The water is continuously added till the image of a candle flame just ceases to be seen. The depth of water sample at which the flame ceases to be seen is obtained and for this depth the turbidity of water is found from a table. The table gives turbidity in terms of JTU that is Jackson turbidity unit. The Jackson turbidimeter can measure the turbidity from 25 to 1000 JTU. Next is Bailey's turbidimeter. The apparatus consists of a closed galvanized iron box. On one side of box there are two glass tubes 
and on other side there is a bulb. One glass tube is filled with water sample whose turbidity is to be measured and the other glass tube is filled with a standard solution of known turbidity. The bulb is lighted and it gives blue light. The light rays fall on the glass tube and you have to observe both tubes from the top. If the color in both tubes is different, the standard solution is replaced with another st standard solution. The process is repeated till you get the same turbidity in both the tubes. You remember the visual comparison of color by tentometer? It's somewhat similar to that. Now you got the turbidity of water sample using Bayless turbidimeter. The Bayless turbidimeter can measure turbidity from 0 to 2 parts per million. Now moving on to the nephlometer. It is a modern turbidimeter which is most commonly used. In Jackson and Bayless turbidimeter, the turbidity was measured by the light rays that passed straight through the sample. But in nephlometer, the light rays passing perpendicular to the incident light are to be observed. You can see the scattered light at 90 degree angle is being observed by a detector. It consists of a source of light and photoelectric detectors and the readout devices to find the intensity of light. A formazine polymer is used as a reference that is standard turbidity. It gives the turbidity in terms of NTU that is nephlometric turbidity unit. The drinking water should have turbidity less than 2.5 parts per million. However, more than 2.5 can be tolerated but it should not be greater than 10 ppm. Next, you have to study the chemical analysis of water. The chemical characteristics of for which the water needs to be analyzed are total solids that include total dissolved solids and total suspended solids and the pH value, hardness, chloride content, nitrogen content, alkalinity, dissolved gases and metals and other substances. In this lecture, we will study about the total solids. The total solids in water can be total dissolved solids and suspended solids. The total dissolved solids are those solids that are dissolved in water and the suspended solids, these are present as the suspended matter in water. In other words, we can say the total solids is equal to total dissolved solids plus suspended solids. Now for measuring the total solids in water, a known volume of water is allowed to evaporate in a oven at 105 degrees Celsius. And the dry residue left is weight. Then the total solids present in water would be given by the expression total solids in terms of milligram per liter or parts per million is equal to weight of residue as mg divided by volume of water as ml into 1000. Now to determine the total dissolved solids, what is to be done? The water is first passed through a filter paper so that the suspended solids are removed. The suspended solids remain on the filter paper and the dissolved solids are passed with the water. Then the water is evaporated to dryness in own. Then the total dissolved solids, it would be equal to weight of residue divided by volume of water into 1000. For suspended solids, simply we subtract total dissolved solids from total solids. Or we can also find it by weighing the residue left on filter paper. That is suspended solids, it would be equal to weight of residue divided by volume of water into 1000. For drinking water, total dissolved solids should be less than 500 mg per liter and not more than 1500 mg per liter. In the next lecture, we will study about the other chemical characteristics.